Hi, everybody, and welcome to Metamorphosis 2023 Poetry Slam, which is going to become an annual event. We have already decided. We're super excited. Um, and we are here with Adessa, who is our um, inspiration for tonight. So I am going to pass us straight over to you. Odessa. Thank you, Sarah, for that lovely introduction. Yes, hello. I'm Odessa Ford. Um, I am a land artist and uh, amateur poetry writer, I would say. Um, and I live here in Oregon in the States. Um, so yeah, I write poems. And one of my pieces for the Lacuna Festivals is my performance piece, which um, my poem uh, is... Uh, featured in that performance um and it is called um i am said the butterfly and so that was kind of the inspiration um uh just to give you a little background um i never actually did poetry um uh like spoken word um but i was introduced to spoken word poetry years and years ago um, I listened to Buddy Wakefield, believe it or not, and he is a spoken word poet. You can look him up. He has a TED Talk that is brilliant, by the way. It's called Free Air. So it's Buddy Wakefield and Free Air. And he is a spoken word poet, and it was it touched me so much. First off, he was speaking about meditation practice which was something that I now practice. And um, it was through his poem that I was even introduced to it. So I I just found this love for spoken word poetry. And it's such a beautiful art form. Um, and I think I like poetry too, because I have dyslexia. And so for me, when I write, it can be very hard for me to communicate my words. So poetry allows me just this ability to just let things flow out in any manner they want. You know, punctuation doesn't matter. I can just, any cadence I want. Um, I actually, because I'm very visual, even when I write my poems, how I put them on the page is, you know, it's unique to me. And that's why I love poetry so much, because it speaks to our spirits, our souls, and who we are. Um, and so that's really what got me into this. Now, I, I'm sure you guys are curious as far as what a poetry slam is all about. Um, like Sarah was saying earlier, she's, she just didn't even know what a poetry slam was or attended one. I've never so, been to one, no. I've heard about them, but I've never been. No, very neither cool. have I. Neither have I. All right. Well, I will tell you it's customary. Um, I'll give you some ground rules, okay, for the Poetry Slam today. Um, uh, the participants, and it looks like it's just Jane and I today, which is good as we go ahead to head here, but she didn't want to do a, like a head-to-head uh, -head, um, battle here. So we're just going to pull. But here's how we respond. So um, the rules are this. It has to be a work written by you. Um, it must be spoken. So that's, you, you can't just post it. It's got to be spoken. Unless you have something prepared you'd like to share in the comments, that's just fine too. Um, it must be a spoken word poem. The theme is metamorphosis. So for today, we ask that the theme be around metamorphosis. That is very, very open to interpretation. So um, I know that there was a lot of poems that I've already written that I thought might fit this theme as well. So, um, so that's the other thing. Um, now with the slam format, generally there would be judges and we would scale on three separate criteria. One is, did you meet the requirements of the poem? Is it your poem? Is it um, three minutes to six minutes in length? It can't extend past a certain time. I set the time at six minutes, um, mostly because my own poem is a little long. <laughs> So that was selfish of me, but six, three to six minutes is generally um, uh, what we would do for a slam. And then um, what is it? What is the cadence? How did they perform? Right. And um, and then the audience participation. This is where the audience really is important to the slam. Um, now, we don't clap at a poetry slam. No clapping. OK. Oh, well, shame. Right. <laughs> no clapping. Right. Uh, you can snap, though. And you can snap. That is lovely. So if you hear a line that resonates with you that you love, 
you'll snap. So you'll hear this snapping all through the poems. Like if there's a really pivotal line that somebody's very powerful or, um, you know, the was it funny and people laugh? You know, it's okay to laugh. It's okay to respond. Um, but the clapping and this, or, you know, the clapping is, is a no-go, but the snapping, you'll hear that a lot, which is beautiful, right? I and have then a feeling, feeling, sorry. I have a day. feeling that some of mine might be shorter than three minutes. That's okay. It's okay. Oh, it doesn't okay. have to be. It's just that's the length. It has It has to be less than. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, is it no clapping because then you can't hear the poem? Is that why it's snapping? It, it really ruins the cadence. Yeah. Um, if you're performing, mm. let's say, and you, we see it all the time, right? Performers on stage, singers, and um, even presenters, if they go to an award show, and you'll see this happen live where the audience is clapping so much and they can't that you can't hear them or um or maybe it throws them off so to just respect the performers because this is really a performance right it's a live performance and because of that we respect them and yes you're right sarah it can distract the performer and it can um because we're a time limit too you can imagine if everybody's clapping and the person performing stops so they could be heard. <laughs> now you're eating into the three minute time limit that I had or whatever, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. Um, plus it's super cool to snap. Like, isn't that the coolest thing, right? To just snap. <laughs> so we'll snap in agreement. Um, and then since it's just Jane and I sharing our poems today, um, afterwards, what I thought would be lovely is we'll have a little writing, poetry writing workshop. Um, oh, cool. We'll have a prompt. And then um, we'll give some time for writing and discussion about that. And then after we're done, if you would like to share your poem and read it, um, if it's finished or, or what you have, we'll share those two for each other. Okay. Oh, great. So that sounds good. And Jane, um, to, I'm going to give you the option. Would you like to go first or would you like me to go first? Oh, okay. Um, I'll let you go first. Okay, I thought that might be the case. Give me some time <laughs> to get a little braver, huh? Yeah, okay. a bit of courage. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you this. and I, um, When we did the podcast interview, I read this quote then, and I'm going to read it now because I think it's so important. Um, and it's Maya Angelou's quote. And she says, we delight in the beauty of the butterfly but rarely admit the changes it has gone through to achieve that beauty. So to give you a little background about my poem here, um, this poem, uh, I Am Said the Butterfly, was in tandem with my performance piece. It was part of that. Um, and the poem was written after. Um, it was also written after I had gone through some great personal struggles. And I think that's the beautiful part about poetry, too, is it really speaks to where we are in the moment. Um, what is it that we're feeling and what have we struggled through? So in writing this poem, I was really thinking about the life cycle of, of us, of our love, of our grief, of our pain. And, and throughout the poem, um, there are references to my childhood even. Um, references to um, my children and a house we used to live on. Um, there's a line in the poem that you'll hear here. It's, um, it says, we fell from the sycamore trees. And we lived on a street that was lined with sycamore trees, and it was called Sycamore. So th through the poem um, and through poetry, we get to convey not only our our true selves, but I really wanted it to convey my life's journey to this point, right? All the, the grief I've been through and all of the pain that I've experienced in my life. And especially this theme of metamorphosis, um, I wanted it to be quite literal about the journey of the butterfly. And so this is the from the butterfly's perspective. Um, the caterpillar to start with. And um, 
So that's that's my segue into the poem um, uh, for you guys. So I'll go ahead and start now. Bear with me here. I like I said, I do have a little dyslexia, so sometimes reading out loud is hard for me. But I will do the best I can to to read it in a, a nicer cadence for you. Um, when I was doing, I will say this too. When I was doing the performance of this. I had the opportunity to stop and re-record. And so it was done a little differently, but I'm gonna try to give it the same emotion and the same um, passion that I had um, in performing it for my performance piece. Thank you. Okay. All right, let me get this so I can see it here. And it's gonna take me a second to be brave to start, so I apologize. Okay. I wish, I wish, I wish I were a butterfly, a ravenous caterpillar, fat, ugly caterpillar. I cling to my broken tree. The hungry, hungry caterpillar has nothing on me. I cling, uh, sorry, I've lost my place. See, I'm telling you. <laughs> I've been devouring the pages of this book of life, engorged by pain, fat with grief. I climb to find a sweeter leaf. Limbs broken, they are twisted on my family tree. Struggling, crawling, I long to be free. I climb, I climb, I climb, I crawl. I devour, climbing to the top of my crumbling tower. I turn to see my silky thread tied around my neck instead. I struggle to breathe. I struggle to breathe. The tree of life, it lied to me. I consumed it all fat, fat with the dead and dying higher and higher. I climb, I climb, I crawl. I begin to fall. I fight to crawl, I fight to just be free. I wonder why they can't see me. I ingested their words, words of hate. They poisoned me. Venomous snake, I don't live in the grass. We danced on wings of butterflies. Higher, higher. Death, my true desire. Trying desperately to break free. We fell from the sycamore trees. Pain, agony, filling me with dread. I climb. I climb, left for the dead. I eat, I eat, I eat. Engorged by meat, each branch I, branch I pass. Along the way, a shadow cast. Limb breaks, limbs break beneath my weight. I fall again. Is this my fate? Fat caterpillar, you disgust me. Beneath the shadow of my hate, maternal leaves belong to me. I'm sheltered in their warm embrace as I search to find his familiar face, the face of love, of my desire, the artist divine fueled by passions, fire. I climb, I eat, I fall. Devoid of love, I cease to climb. I surrender to this fate of mine. I weaved my grave with words of hate around myself. This is my fate. Spinning silk, I cocoon my heart until the day I came apart. Cocooned inside, I go to sleep. In darkness, I will always be. My body writhing and contorting me. It trans my transformation in pain and tragedy. This is no easy task. My wings are buried in my back. He finds me there. He watches me watching as I try to break free, waiting, waiting, waiting. Time stands still, surrender, he says. He wonders if I ever will. Yet he waits for me, he waits for me to emerge, for me to see. I buried my love in darkness, my grief break free. It tears apart the misery. Yes, my metamorphosis is not done. My beauty, it needs to fill the sun. He gently places me in his tree, his branches full of love for me. My cocoon of pain is all I see. 
but he is there to shelter me. Mm -hmm. In the warmth of the summer sun, warm, safe, my wings, they have begun. They push, they pull, they tear, they fight my wings, my wings. They long to be free, beautiful light envelops me. I begin to emerge, transformed by power. I am, I am. I'm on my tower, watching in pure delight. He marvels at my virgin flight, wings of light. I begin to fly, his masterpiece of work of art. I spread my wings. Thou art beautiful, oh my love. Love raining down from God above. I begin to fly. I am. He whispers in my ear. He is always so very near. Words of love he does utter. As my wings, they begin to flutter. I am love. I am his lover. We are one, me and my lover. Passion, fire, and ice emerging, radiant, free. I take flight. My beauty is beyond compare. My color is bright. My love is there. I fly above my broken tree, contorted by misery. It sheds its leaves. It dies. It pleads. My transformation is complete. He watches as I fly away, promising to return one day. The summer soon will soon, uh, the summer sun will soon move south. Until it does, I flitter about. Each flower sweet, fragrant, free. I fly, I am finally free. I am the breeze, I am the light. I am this, I am all right. I, the butterfly, spread my wings. I fly home until the spring. His arms stretched out, true love's embrace. He is mine, I see his face. The face of love, the face of light. I am, he says, as I take flight. I am, I am, I am, I am, said the butterfly. There we go. Hey, we go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow, what okay. performance. That was very powerful. Very powerful. Thank you. Thank you. I was actually just prepared to read it, <laughs> not, but I think I think um it deserves that. So I appreciate that. Thank you. No, yeah, thank you. All righty. So all right, Jane. <laughs> We've got you next. I think the thing is, because of the content of your last your piece, that just hits home so poignantly. Thank you. It really does. I think this this really this poem is is it encompasses so much of my pain, my grief, that journey that I, that loss that I experienced. And um, I think that's why it's such a lovely art form, this spoken word poetry, because we can, we can say it in the way that our heart feels it, if that makes sense. It does, it does. It's very emotional. Yes, yes, thank you. My husband is so lovely. He just brought me a tissue. <laughs> it's very emotional and it's it's beautiful that you can express yourself that way through your words. I don't know that I've ever sort of had the opportunity or really been able to do that. So it'd be interesting to see what happens later, what happens next. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, and and I think that's part of what Sarah and I were talking about this. Let's do an annual slam. I think once people see what it is and how, how um, performing poetry um, is so powerful and it really can be powerful, but I do not want it to intimidate you either because I will tell you, I've been to many poetry gatherings and slams and it is 
absolutely okay just to read your poem. Um, you do not have to do it in a performance fashion if you don't feel comfortable with that. So, but I believe we would all still love to hear your poem, Jane. Yes, definitely. I'm just, I was just going to chip in and say, I don't know if it's that maybe in the UK, we, we've not don't have much experience of this type of performance of poetry, or I've not seen anything like it before. So this is a new thing for me. It could be that, I mean, I will tell you, there is a quite a um, large community of um, uh, poets in the U.S., so it, it very possibly could be that it's more um, based in the U.S. And I, I will have to admit that I haven't really looked into that, but um, I hadn't known this even existed, like I said, until I listened to um, the spoken word uh, poet Buddy Wakefield. And yeah. um, so I hadn't even known it existed. It's kind of a culture that's a little like if you're in, you're in. So yeah. it may be that it happens and you're just not aware of it too, because a lot of poetry slams are, um, are, uh, oh, okay. My husband just hands me this list of spoken word poets in the U S okay. in the, or, oh, in the UK. Sorry. I, you said that and my dyslexia switched that, but, um, so we have Benjamin Zephania. Yeah, let me give you a couple names that you might um, look into. Uh, yeah. Kay Tempest, um, yeah. George the Poet, uh, looks like Malika Booker, and Linton, uh, we, oh gosh, I'm going to butcher his name, uh, Kwesi Johnson, spelled K-W-E-S-I, Kwesi, Kwesi? Um, so those are just a few, but he just um, Googled and searched for British spoken word poets, and um, he got a list of 20 or more. So they, it is there. It is there, Jane. <laughs> it's kind oh. of niche. It's kind of, like I said, it's it's kind mm -hmm. of like if you know, you know. It, if you think back to like the 20s and the jazz speakeasies and, and things like that, it's almost reminiscent of that. I think a little bit and so it's a little underground sometimes yes I get that yeah I will look out for that thank you I know mm -hmm. I've heard of um, Benjamin Zephaniah I've seen him speak and, and do his poetry live um, and also there's somebody that's a bit more sarcastic and John Cooper Clark so oh, I love like, John Cooper Clark yeah, yeah that's <laughs> it he's a real cool character isn't he so just, I've seen those, but this, you know, yours was completely different. That was really sort of hard hitting and really it brought your own emotions up. So yeah, that was really good. Thank you. Thank you. And I, um, I would encourage you also, I know here in Eugene, we have a poetry gathering here once a month mm -hmm. that they do poetry slams. So um, you could search for just, just search it just as that um, poetry slams in my area or near me. And you should be able to find um, local groups um, that do these. Um, they're quite common here in the U S like I said, I'm not sure about the UK, but you could search that and see if there are groups near you where you can maybe um, check it out. If you're interested in following up, I would encourage anybody watching this also to do that. Um, and I would really encourage you to to watch some videos of these poets that we've um, been talking about. I think with spoken word poetry, each performer or each writer um, really has their own way of doing it. So like Buddy Wakefield is just very animated and he is like, he is all in his whole body. He, I mean, to watch him perform is just phenomenal. And I don't ever like, put myself in the caliber of the type of artist that he is. Um, but I've also seen other poets who um, like Shane Kozian is his name and he, um, he uses music and it's very methodical in the background, um, but he's just really, he has a wonderful presence, but he's not as physical as let's say Buddy Wakefield might be. So I would encourage um, people watching this to research it and look and find 
Um, there are a lot, a lot of artists out there. And I think, Jane, what you're picking up on is this, um, you know, that it was much more of a performance, you know, with the spoken word. Um, and some poets do it that way. But I think every poet has their own style, you know, their yeah. own way of doing it. I, th I yeah. think Bev hit, Bev, hit, Bev hit the nail on the head. We, we're pretty, we're not in that uh, mix. Um, so it's interesting. We do have people that do spoken word, but obviously if we haven't attached to it, it's not a thing we would go out of our way to sort of be involved in. Right. Until, until it becomes a thing. I've always put things down on paper and it's usually in reaction to a situation or whatever's gone on or what's happening, um, but never considered it anything other than my words on paper and not for the consumption of anybody else. Right, right. So, and, yeah, and, and isn't that the truth, though? Like, I think with my poetry, there's poetry that I write that's just for me that stays in my journal that I might never read. Um, and I, I mean, I've been writing poetry since I was in my teenage years, you know, um, that teenage angst, uh, sure translates well into poetry. So, um, I think, uh, there, it's such a versatile, um, art form, but I too like to write in a journal. I like to write my poems down. Um, before we go today, I do have another one that I was um, thinking of presenting to you guys, so I'll read it to you too if you um, like to hear it. It's actually the very first spoken word poem I wrote, and there's a little story behind it, but um, I think when it just comes from a place of, like, you just experienced something in your life and you want to write about it, um, I think that's just so wonderful, and I journal a lot, Jane, so I think you've got it right um, and each one of the way we do this is up to us, too. And it, it's it's such a personal practice, writing poetry or doing anything else um, that um, the way you're doing it is absolutely fine. But I love that that you're um, communicating this like you don't know that it happens right until, you know, yeah, yeah. and it kind of helps the door to see it in a different way, doesn't yeah. it? Well, I've got well. If, if I if I just give you a little bit of background, um, everything was leading up to uh, me coming out for a month in twenty twenty for the Lacuna Festivals. All the work I'd done um, the year before for the festivals had just spurred me on, and I was on a mission to get back. And then, obviously, as you know, we all got locked down and we couldn't move forward. But mm. not just myself, but Beverly uh, Bev. We, we lost all our creative drive. There wasn't a thing between us. We had many conversations. Um, so there's a couple of things I wrote down at the time um, that were, were really angry. I was I was really ticked off and I've had to I've had to be ever so careful because there's some choice words in there. So, oh, okay. really so I didn't address this and I'm glad you yeah. said that because uh, the other thing with the poetry slam is this it's usually adult only i will tell okay. you that um because the content now if there is content within your poem it is courtesy to tell people there is a trigger warning at the end of the, uh, the beginning of this poem that may trigger you um of any content that, that you might find um hard so you just let them know that um this this poem contains um adult language and that's all you need to say and it's absolutely up to the person viewing it or listening to choose whether or not they they engage it yeah. um it's up to them but we ask everybody to respect the content of everyone's poems is very personal and it can be very adult content okay very hard topics um things uh, and i i know this from personal experience um childhood traumas um sexual abuse um alcohol addiction things like that that can be very hard topics to talk about and so because these topics can come up in this poem we just like everyone to be aware of that to respect the the poets um, and that if you do not wish to hear it in that moment, just shut off your screen for a minute 
Um, like I said, the poems are three to six minutes in length. This one um, is probably going to be less than that um, so that they don't have to listen if they do not like to. But um, it's absolutely fine, Jane. So please don't censor your poem. We'd like to hear it as you wrote it. <laughs> what I really love about this is that actually there are ground rules. Mm. And, yep. and <laughs> yes. you know, and that everybody's open and quite clearly informed about what's going to be said. And I think that's really interesting. So if you don't mind, I'm pu I've plucked up the courage and I've pulled this one, but I have censored. It's not really bad because I, I don't swear as much as I think I do, but I do have a mo my moments. Um, so this is this is the run up to everything just disappearing and, and <laughs> what I thought was going to be happening, not happening, but yet, there was still some sort of there was still some sort of hope. I knew it was still there in the distance and I knew I would get there in the end. I just didn't know how long and you know, so a few little words, but bear with me, right. Supported, encouraged, steadfast, solid, no matter what, always. Bullshit, finding things really, what the fluff. Believing it's not that. Ounce of doubt. Figure it out. For goodness sake, I really don't need this. Forward. Moving. Doing. Believing. Do it. Closed. Turned in. Shut down. Stopped. Slowed down. Crawling. Still. Oh, thank you. I'm clicking, but I'm on mute, so you can't hear me. I had to unmute. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was odd doing that, but I it, strangely interesting reading the words back now because the ones that follow this are very different, are very different. And when you write something, it as Odessa said, it's more often than not in the moment. So what you get out sometimes is quite um, strong. Yeah, it feels quite raw. And, you know, I think that's why it's quite easy to connect to poetry, for me anyway, because, like, as you were reading that, I was listening oh. and I was thinking, yeah, yeah like exactly that you know like I was right there with you feeling mm. the same things so yeah yeah and, and and it's 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 interesting because I haven't read that for a long time so mm. it still makes me quite angry <laughs> oh really yeah I'm still I'm still <clears throat> about it <clears throat> you know <laughs> Um, I don't know if you've seen in the chat, but um, Elaine has joined us. She's just oh, travelled to Lanzarote. I did um, see you, Elaine. And Elaine's Hello. a wonderful poem, Jane, and given <clears throat> lots of high <clears throat> fives. Thank you. Thank yeah, I just you. want to say, Jane, yeah, that was really powerful to listen to. Uh, you know, just it was full of emotion, and that's what good poetry is, is for me anyway, just full of emotion and raw and I love the words. I loved you. You instead of you know the F C U C K fluff. Yes, which is a the fluff. fluff. I, I, was being yeah. I, I, I like that. that. After the bullshit. Favorite. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was it was fun. That I love that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. It, it's yeah. interesting. Odessa said earlier that she she yeah you'd not really done a lot of poetry at school or you'd done so a little bit. Same here. I'd never really done a lot and I've never pursued it and I've never thought about it in any great shape or form but when you actually look at what you write sometimes and it might only be notes for some artwork or some creative thing that you're doing it becomes mm -hmm. quite po poetry-like mm -hmm. you know and it can be used in in, in other ways mm -hmm. so yeah well, thank you Odessa for this it's really interesting oh. I, you know what it's it's one of the most addictive things, I'm going to tell you this, 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 this is addictive. I have yet to find a slam local, um, but when I lived in Boise, Idaho, um, 
there was a local group that did this quite regularly and I performed a few times and um, I went head to head with my daughter, um, daughter then uh, she's, uh, they are non-binary. So let me get this straight. I'm still mom. I'm working on it, but I'm getting there. Uh, <laughs> non-binary. They did a beautiful um, couple poems and, and my inspiration was watching my own child with such passion deliver such beautiful words and I thought wow this is so something I want to be a part of too and it was it was their passion that drew me in but the slam environment just a, a bunch of people hanging out in a bookstore snapping mm -hmm. <laughs> drinking coffee or wine or whatever um exchanging poems is I, it just doesn't get much mm -hmm. better honestly I mean, this gives it a little, you get a little taste of it, but I promise you, um, you, and Sarah said it, we're going to make this an annual event. So it's happening. Um, it's, it's happening. It's in the, the schedule already for 2020. It's already um, <laughs> um, and Jane and Bev, just on um, slams happening in West Yorkshire. So mm. although I have not attended, um, there are a lot. And I have found that previously they are not called open um, slams. They are called open mics. Ah, open mic, open mic yeah, night. Sorry. Yes, yeah, I should have said music. that. Many, open many mic. call it an open mic. Yes. Right. Um, but there's like, I think there's one in Bradford that's monthly. I'm pretty certain. And at Leeds Uni, at the um, Union, they have one, which is quite really? regularly. Yeah, yeah. They're just not, I don't know why I've not been. The one in Leeds I know about because it was when I was tutoring at the art university and it happened on the same night as my um class my evening class and that uh, was how I knew about it because the first night of the term I was always like are you my student or are you here for the poetry event yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'd just like to say oh it's also sorry just um two couple of things I'm sorry I missed Odessa's poem hopefully we're going to get another one maybe it was, I don't it know was beauty, uh, it was beautiful it was oh, beautiful thank you um, and and also just to say, uh, Jane, what you said about the words, because as an artist, I write words all the time, and, mm -hmm. and um, Dessa, um, and uh, it's I love the fact that you were saying just about, you know, that because when we read back these words, you know, that it, it's it's poetry, mm -hmm. you know, it, it I, I'm always very critical and think, oh, I couldn't possibly read that, but I'm always writing words and always experiencing through just not just drawing but also words as well and so thank you for that and also um in Maidstone in Kent they have like a poetry open mic so if anyone's in the southeast yeah. at any point um there I could I can put that um I can pass that information on somewhere maybe oh yeah I can put it in the whatsapp group yeah yeah I could do that um because it's there's a lot of creatives gather there and have like read their poems on the open mic and uh, it's a great little community there actually of really interesting poets that are all published and they're all sort of you know localish and um they're not really making money out of it but they made they they sort of started publishing their work so you know they're getting there bit by bit but yeah mm, thank you interesting sorry i feel like it's a, an unexplored art form Something yes. that I've not really looked into. I feel a bit like an introverted poet. I've always sat and read poetry and mm -hmm. read it and been quite, you know, just sat and been quiet reading it. So this is a whole new experience. Um, and it's something I've definitely looked to, to follow up and, and try and go and experience something, a live event, because I think that's <laughs> really interesting. How about, Bev, we make a date for the Leeds Uni or Bradford? That would be a really cool idea. I'd like <laughs> that. <Yeah. laughs> oh, dear. Any information okay, well, that we've got about um, events, if you send them either to um, the regular email address or put them in the um, WhatsApp group for the artists that are on the island, I will add it to the YouTube recording so that then when people are watching... They can then go, oh, thank you. Yeah, thank no. you. Thank you. Adessa, are we gonna have another? Can we? Yes. No, I'm I'm gonna tell you, I think I have a virus on my computer, and that's why I couldn't use Zoom yesterday, and that's why I'm having trouble here today. Um, I was trying to pull it up and I'll tell you what it's doing, and I'm pretty sure it's a virus, and my husband was 
overhearing. I think we have a computer virus. So when I'm typing, it types everything backwards. And <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's not, and it doesn't matter where I type into. So I thought maybe it was just a keyboard issue and camera issue yesterday, but it appears that I probably got a little virus here on the computer. So, um, but I was able to pull it up here on my phone. So I hope you guys, as long as you can still hear me, can you still see me? Yes. yes. Okay. Let so me just good. Um, with that. I cannot see you anymore. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and then, um, oops, let me just get back to it. I found it in here, now I gotta search it again. So I had it on the computer, that was the problem, I couldn't pull it up. Um, and then I thought maybe I'll just type backwards because I'm dyslexic and my brain works backwards anyways most of the time. So, um, but I couldn't figure out how to type the title of the, <laughs> poem in backwards because this wasn't comprehending <laughs> is that funny make your brain hurt. right i know um, yeah. okay now i'm going to give you um uh a little background on this poem um this is a poem that so Oh gosh, where to begin? Uh, so just after my mother died in 2012, I really struggled with processing through that grief. And it it was the next year after that I I really just kind of threw myself into my work. Um, I was definitely ignoring the fact that I was overworked and overwhelmed and still hadn't grieved the loss of my mother. And it was shortly, uh, it was just right at a year later that I we found out that my late husband was terminally ill. So it was a time of great trauma and tragedy and grief and uncertainty in my life. Um, it was also a time where I wasn't being real good to myself. Um, and I think we've probably all done that in our lives where we're not really taking care of ourselves very much. I wasn't sleeping. I was working twice as many hours a week as I should. And I had an executive job. So I was under a lot of stress and I had a, I had a breakdown and, and I spent 72 hours in a psychiatric hospital, um, having had a, a breakdown and it was pretty scary for everyone. But while I was there, I was given a journal um, and this was the very first spoken word poem that I intentionally wrote. Um, I unfortunately just needed a break physically. I just needed a break. My, my mind needed a break. So this forced it upon me. I was actually at the time really upset about it and not happy about it. But, you know, when you're in that situation, there's nothing you can do, but just go with it. And so having to just really, um, surrender to my circumstances. I started writing down the things the people in the psychiatric ward of this hospital were saying in my journal because I found it fascinating. And I, I suppose part of my artistic side of me just found it really fascinating. Um, and so I would write down what they said. And that's really what started the inspiration for this poem. Now, this poem was written just all in like very much out in one session. Um, but I, I precursor this with a little trigger warning. These topics that I'm talking about are very um, personal and um, uh, could be triggering for you. So if it's something that um, any type of uh, adult content or um language would offend you, then you may want to mute yourself while I read the poem. Um, but there is some language in it and some adult content. Um, uh, so you may, may find that hard. Okay. Um, the reason I tell you the, 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 what happened in front of the poem is because this just flowed right out of me into my journal, you know, as Jane was talking about when she was talking about her poem that she read, some thoughts and these were my thoughts this first spoken word poem i ever wrote and ever performed 
um, was literally just my thoughts as they went out onto the page. Okay. And I haven't performed this one in a while either, so bear with me. Silent Screams. Oh, sorry. I will um, tell you the title of this poem uh, is Silent Screams. And it was written in 2013. Silent screams echo through empty minds. Slowly they surface as melodious moans. Empty rooms, empty hearts, empty lives. Cries that no one else can hear. Don't forget me. I'm here suffering in silence. No way out, nowhere to turn. No one to hear. Topsy-turvy, up, bend down. Side to side, lows that feels like highs, smiles that hide the agony within. Do not forget me. I am still here. I am silently screaming. Let me go. Let me be. Let me live. Let me die. If ever I find myself within these walls again, cursed be that day. Hell hath no fury like a mother, stripped, naked, exposed longing for the touch of her children, weakened submission. You will do what I say, learn the rules quickly or rue the day. Strapped down, shackled by my sin. I will not go easily into the dark again. Don't touch that, stand here, wait there, back off, behave, or the consequence is time, more time, cursed time. Watch the clock. Tell them what they want to hear. Do not say too much. Convince them that you're sorry. Repent for their sins. Then when the day is done, cry silently. Or they will find you in the dark and you will pay for their trespasses. Words slip off the tongue and slide into oblivion. Words, they hold more power than I have given credit to. Don't believe me? Insert one word, omit as you may then reap the consequences. Your words commingle with mine. They become one word, one breath, hot on my cheek. Step back. This is my air. This is my space. These are my words. You may borrow them if you like. But in the end, we both know who owns them. If I were to cry, would you hear? Would you really care? You think I don't know the truth, but I see you. I see the truth behind your lies, the truth behind your tears. Give me back my identity. I want my voice to be heard. Did you hear what I said? Back and forth, up, then down. Hear the silent melody as it cascades like a thundering phallus in the face of humanity. Bring back innocence, bring back time, bring back my sanity. There is nothing you can take from me that I have not already freely given away. Take my pride, take my joy, take my life. If that'll make you feel almighty, oh, but don't you dare. Don't you give up my secrets. They're mine to hold. They're mine to chew up and spit out. You may find yourself weakened, chastised, but remember this. Hear what I say. You are not your identity. You are getting the idea, but you don't know the words. Do you see? Do you see how I stole your words? You thought they were yours, but you gave them to me freely, letting them escape. Don't utter, don't mutter, don't stutter, lest you lose your ownership of what I say. These words are mine. Now, silent or thunderously spoken, they are mine. Heed them, read them bleed them, chew on them. I hope they make you choke. I hope they make you weep. I hope they make you stop, then say, fuck, fuck this, fuck you, fuck it all. I am done. Take my words easy off the tongue, breathe them in and out again, slowly until light shines on again into oblivion. There we go. Oh. 
Wow. Beautiful. Thank you. I'm a little bit. Thank you guys oh. for being so gracious wow. and kind. Um, I haven't, I haven't even read that in so long and it brings back, evokes so much emotion and memory for me um, too. I think that's one of the things that um, this art forum does is it, even though it was 10 years ago, I can smell the air as I sat and I listened, you know, to these people, these lost souls, these, um, which I, and I, I take it as an honor that I got to be amongst these people and that I honestly was there for a reason. And I, I know that I needed to be there too. Um, and I think when we expose ourselves to exhaustion and grief and all of these things that we don't take care of our bodies, our minds go, you know, our minds are part of that and we have to nurture that too. Um, but I just, it reminds me of how far I've come mm -hmm. and how much I've grown um, in just my own power since then. And I think that's what metamorphosis, this theme to bring it back is all about, right? Is this transformation mm -hmm. And to be able to look back, I, I find it such an honor to be able to share that with you because mm -hmm. I didn't realize how powerful of a poem, first off, it, I knew it's a powerful poem already, but it takes on new meaning for me now, mm -hmm. you know, than it did then. And so I think that's one of the reasons why I think poetry speaks to all of us. It's a universal thing, you know, um, and uh you know, we go back to the great masters of poetry, Shakespeare and, um, you know, uh, Dickinson and all the, you know, um, all of the, the beautiful writers that I loved and, or that I would read when I was growing up. I even um, used to read um, some poetry about, you know, the Yukon and just some funny poems and just how much poetry touched me, you know, when I was growing up. And I think it's important that, um, you know, that we keep this oral tradition going too. Um, one of the things I think, and I, I'm, I'm glad I thought of it because I, I did want to speak about it is that this spoken word poetry goes back to our natural storytelling, storytelling, right? That oral tradition of telling our stories to each other. And this is such a beautiful way to do that. So I thank you guys for being so open and willing to listen with open hearts. Um, and that's why in this kind of poetry, uh, open mic or slam as, as we're calling it, forum is so important to have such good structure and rules around it so that we can all be engaging um, and give that. So I, I thank you guys for being so such a wonderful audience and and listening i appreciate that too i'm gonna let you guys um give some feedback too because i always like to hear that can i jump in yeah. oh that's a, yeah that was wonderful and it you know it's really interesting that when you gave the context um because i just felt like it was like it could have it, it you know it's like a raw a, a war cry listening to a war cry for you know people people who've been yeah, had awful things happen to them or people who aren't seen. That's really what it is. Like women yeah. of certain age or women of color or women of size or any, you know, it speaks, those words speak to so many. Um, it was really powerful. Yeah, very, very powerful um, to hear those words because it was universal, it felt to me like, you know, you gave us the context, but there was a universal feeling in those words especially as a woman, actually, uh, right? for me. Yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, and, and you think about, you know, some of those powerful words really were coming from real life experience. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's that wanting so much for people to see you and hear you. And this idea, I remember when I was a child and I was in a dream, a nightmare, and you know how you're trying to scream, but nothing comes out. Mm -hmm. And that's what it felt like while I was there. Like, it didn't matter how loud I cried or they didn't care. There was nobody there that was going to hear me or acknowledge me. So I think you hit it right on the head. It's about being 
the people that are unseen in this world that that um, don't have a voice or or even have a way to speak it because somebody has taken their voice from them and stolen that from them. Mm-hmm. And that's really what it felt like. And that I think that feeling is universal. I think all of us have been there at some point in time in our life where we felt like we didn't have a, a voice. Um, and especially coming from a perspective of a woman and a, and a st- very strong uh, feminine in this poem, this feminine energy in this poem, you've got it. it. It is so universal, this idea, this feeling that we're not seen. And especially if you're different, like you said, if you're a woman of color or of age or um, uh, or maybe you're a non-binary or maybe you're a transgender woman or whatever, it speaks to that feminine identity and the feeling of not being heard. And it is a universal feeling, I believe, in this modern world that a lot of people don't feel seen and heard. And so I'm glad you picked up on that. That's absolutely my intention. So I guess now that I I read it again, like the first time I did it, it had a different meaning to me then. And I think, and that's what the point I was saying is that then it was so very new, right? that Mm -hmm. those feelings were so new and the loss and the grief was also new the first time I performed it. Um, The first time I performed it was actually six years later. Six years it took me to get brave to read it out loud. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until after my husband had passed and my, um, and I will, um, I'll also say that this, this poetry slam that I performed this at um, was, after a great grief and uh, period of homelessness, I was homeless living in a hotel. I mean, my life just fell apart. And so the first, when I read it then, it had a different meaning, right? So when I wrote it, it had one meaning and it was very quite literal in some of those words, right? And then when I read it six years or, you know, six years later, it had another meaning. It had a different meaning when I performed it the last time. And I don't even think it was like six years. At, well, it was six years after I wrote it that I performed it. And now another six years later, reading it again for the first time out loud, which has been nearly that long since I read it, it holds a new meaning. And I think that's why it makes poetry and and just any art form, mm. whether it be uh, performance art, visual art, whatever type of art, that um, those themes are universal. Yeah. I just want to respond to, can I, and I know Beverly and Jane desperately probably want to say something. <laughs> can I just, just say one thing, one other thing just relating to that was that um, I'm writing a grant at the moment and um, you, what you just said about when we respond to our work further down the line, you know, when we are, we, stuff has happened to us, we've kind of been able to process stuff. And then we're we're looking at it through that lens, and that's what that yeah what you just said that really came true to you know, and also the link to those words that you're speaking are feel like they're very powerful for where what we've been through as a humanity, you know, through mm-hmm. lockdown and all of that. So it's a grief. It's and I could just see it being performed with uh, women on a stage. Like I could see the whole thing. You there. And other mm. women with you, black backdrop, like lights, spotlights oh. on your head, oh. wow. and so, uh, I can see the whole thing. And you, well, five, five, five women, <laughs> five women speaking. Yeah, I'd love to perform it with you. I mean, it's just wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can, I can see the performance there. Anyway, I'll, I'll uh, let Jane and Beverly jump in. That Thank sounds you. like that such awesome. a cool plan, by the way. I feel like you guys right, need we need to, to make put that, that happen. In the universe. Here's the thing. I have, and I'm going to say it now, and I may regret it later, but I have plans to be in Spain next year. That is my goal. Whoa. Oh, yes, you do. To go next year. <laughs> and, and so next year is my year that I, and I'm already say I'm already plans to save and, and get the funds so that I can get my ticket and, and plan on. So next year we could do that maybe for the festival. That would be lovely. Wow. Yeah. I was just going to say, it feels like a beacon of hope, really, because for you to have, you be, you can express all the raw emotion um, of how you felt going through all that. But then look at you now to think, to think that that's what you've gone through 
but yet you've come out the other side of it so strong and powerful. I think he's really, it's really something. Well, yes, I, I agree. Thank you for that. I do. Um, it's been a long journey to get here, you know, mm -hmm. and I think, I think it's in all of us, this drive, you know, I, um, maybe it's my art artist nature or my curious spirit or just my, uh, uh, my spirit for adventure. Um, but I can tell you that without the love and support of my family and the people that were there to help uh, uh, all through it, because we all grieve together, these losses. Um, and for those of you who don't know that right after my mother died, three years later, I lost my husband of, uh, we were together 17 years. And then um, just uh, actually, I, I just remember this and this is, Wow, memory, boy, the, that poem, the first time I performed it live was the last time I saw my daughter who just a week later took her own life. Oh, Adessa. And so it was a time of great tragedy. And I appreciate that you see that in me. I think it's it comes from my my ancestral roots, my mother who was never, my mother was a fighter. And even up to the very last day of her life, she was a fighter and she went out gracefully. And I, I think it's because of those beautiful life experiences and the people around me that lifted me up and helped me through it, that I was able to, to get through it. I was not all that brave on my own. I can tell you that. My children, my children were my courage. They are the ones, and I talked about this with my son who helped me with my performance piece. I think I, I talked about this recently that he, uh, you know, when I was getting ready to do this first colored performance, um, oh, I think we were talking about it in the uh, podcast, maybe. I was so paralyzed in fear to even do it. And it was my son that said, mom, just do it. They were my courage. They were my strength. And they are the ones that encouraged me to move past it and to help me. And they were also my reason. They were my reason because I wanted to be here for them. And I wanted them to, to have a strong mother. And, uh, and I was all they had left, right? You know, they, and, and so for my children, that is really where that strength comes from. So the woman you see here is only because of them. And that is where my love of life comes from. Because when you've gone through everything that I've gone through, and I will tell you, I do understand that it's a little unique, my story. Most people don't lose someone and then lose everything along with it. You know, their house, their life, livelihood, their car. They're like, I had nothing left. And I literally had to start over. And and so when you've been through that kind of struggle, you have two choices. Two choices. You can either get up or you can stay there. Those are your choices. And um, there was a, a time I had gone just after my husband passed to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, to church, to a cathedral, um, Episcopal Cathedral in Boise, St. Michael's. And it was just after he passed. And um, the bishop was talking about um, this story of uh, Jesus coming to the well and healing, or, you know, this man um, that asked for his healing. But he had just such a wonderful way with words. And so he came up and he didn't know me from Adam, honestly. He didn't know me at all. And um, he was talking about this. And at the end of the story, he said that Jesus bent down and whispered in this man's ear. And he grabbed my arm, which like literally I felt just this complete peace. And he whispered in my ear, if you want to be healed, get up. Oh, and wow. I have. I have never forgotten that. Like, I just knew that day that message was meant for me. 
And I think with that kind of faith and love with your family and your faith or whatever that is, for me, hearing those words, and that has become my mantra, honestly, is to say, if you want to be healed, get up, get up, do something every single day. And, and so I think that's where, um, you know, people see my life as so inspiring is because I got up, I got up time and time and again. And every time life threw me a curveball, I got back up again. I had broke both my arms, you know, just before world art festival in March this year. And I still went, you know, I still got up. I still do it every single day. And I, I attribute that to the people around me in my life, my family, my mother, mostly, um, but my children too. And like I said, they're the ones that encourage me the most to do this. And um, so I, I appreciate this format to be able to share not only my poetry, but my story with you all too, because I think that's really important to understand where the poetry comes from, where the performance art comes from. All of that comes from a place of deep loss. And that is also universal. Um, and I think Elaine touched on that too. This is the, you, these are universal themes. Yes, and everyone I, can relate to it. And you you are an inspiration. You are, because you. It's, um, it's fine to say, you know, get up and do it. But, um, and I know that Simon won't mind me talking about this because he's very open about it. But um, Simon has had a struggle for maybe four years now with really severe um, depressive disorder. Um, and for him, literally just to get up, just to get out of bed, you know, have a shower, have a conversation. At some points, particularly during the pandemic, which here for context was really severe compared to the UK. Um, and really, we were lucky that I that we were both here because I was working in the UK and heard that it was about to happen and kind of got a very last minute repatriation flight back. But yeah, some of those days where we were very isolated, you know, getting up was was impossible for him, you know. So um, I think that's why people are so interested in in your story and also the fact that you are open and you are willing to share and be really generous with your experience um because i think that that's still something that people don't do a lot you know and there's still lots of kind of negative um feelings associated with mental illness with um suicide with all sorts of difficult um, topics you know that people don't want to talk about them or they feel ashamed to talk about right. them well and Sarah this is one thing and I'm I thank you for sharing those struggles because I can relate to that with what what Simon's gone through when just prior to my husband's death I was in such poor health by then um, I had such bad pain in my feet I physically couldn't get up yeah. I crawled to the door. And, and so that's one of those things where I think the pandemic really kind of showed us all our, all that we're so fragile. Yeah. That we're all so susceptible and that we need each other. We truly need each other. And I think it was during the pandemic that Simon reached out to me to participate in the distance um, festival. And I just remember thinking about how far um, it felt that the door was. Does that make sense? Like the distance between my bed and the door felt like a, a, a hundred miles when you when you're not well. And I think that's kind of universal to how some of us feel. But I think it's taboo. These are these have been taboo subjects, right? Talking openly about suicide or mental illness or physical illness or whatever it is and I think that formats like this or um, where we get to share and especially artists and we talked about this last year where we have this opportunity to share ourselves to bring awareness to these kinds of things whereas most people might not see that or understand it or know where it's coming from and 
um, the pandemic kind of also showed me how how isolated and lonely most people feel yes, anyway absolutely absolutely and then and then being isolated and i i felt it and i was right here with my own with ken and my husband now um and we were together and so it felt better for me like we were together and thank god for that and i'm glad you were able to get back to simon sarah too because having each other we realized you know I think we forgot too how much we need our community of people too, mm. though, through that, don't you think? I just want to say also, Odessa, thank you for being vulnerable and having the courage to share. And also um, uh, Sarah for sharing about Simon. And, um, you know, I just wanted to honor that, that you were, you know, that you were heard and it's very powerful words. And I just think it's, um, yeah, and it's all of what you said. I have so much identification with what you shared um, um, about the pandemic and about lockdown and us needing each other. And it's what's interesting is that I didn't go on Zoom much, but when I did, I had incredible heart connections with people. Um, like I felt like I have today with uh, on this on this meeting on this uh, Zoom call and. Um, I joined a dance group um, in the pandemic and we shared in outreach rooms and it was so powerful with people around the world and, you know, people were saying there's guards outside with guns and stuff, you know, it was just like to be, to just know what people were going through. Um, I think we're in a time now and that's where I saw artists come into play is that, you know, maybe we've got a little bit of a roadmap like you have at Odessa and, as we just heard with Jane's story, Jane's poem, and you know Sarah and Simon running this festival, that we've got a bit of a roadmap. So maybe we can, by being courageous, like you've just been, Odessa and Jane, you know that it helps other people to be courageous. Yeah. So thank you. I'm going to have to go in a minute because I've I've just been okay. journeying all day, and I might have to go and get some food because I'm a bit. <laughs> no, I think that sounds like a good plan. Um, I just want to give Jane and Bev um a chance to respond before we kind of close up for today. Well, thank you. Um, again, Odessa, that was amazing. Um, for for me personally, I find it interesting that you could be so open. I know I, I can be very open. When I'm sat in front of someone, I'm as honest as the day is long and I will talk about any subject and be, you know, we, we, we can go there. It doesn't bother me. But to be so open and put it in a way that translates, as Elaine said, yeah, it, I felt that I was there with you even though I wasn't there with you. I've been there, I've done my own journey, everybody's done their own journey. We've all gone through those heartache breaking moments when you can't get off the floor and then you look back and think, well, how did that happen and how did I get up again? You know, it's, it's a really powerful thing to be able to put it into words and I'm so glad I joined this um, Zoom because, yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jane, for your kind words. I appreciate that. And thank you. Thank you for sharing um, this time with us, too. I appreciate that. We all do. Um, and your poem was lovely. It was so lovely. So wonderful. I, I'm going to go back and watch it again and again, too. Uh, and laugh at my Yorkshire accent. No, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Your accent's fabulous, Jane. I mean, oh, I could just listen to you forever. You, I just love accent. I love your Yorkshire accent. When you spoke the poem, wonderful. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate it feels that. like Thank home you. for me, Jane. I love oh, it. Well, yeah, we know why. We know, we're all over to Yorkshire a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, Beverly, anything that you would like to add? Yeah, I'd just like to say, I just thought it were amazing. I've actually, it's opened up my interest in following this up now as an art form because it's something I've not really been exposed to, don't know enough about it, 
didn't know quite what to expect and how I'd feel about it. So I felt a little bit, oh, when we started because I've got nothing prepared and I felt a bit of foolish because I've not. I just thought, oh, I'm just joining in. I'm just listening. And then I thought, oh, no, cracky, I'm going to have to be part of this and I don't know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> but I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And I thought the emotion that you got across, Odessa, we just it's a gift that you've got there it's absolutely fantastic and you've made me want to sort of dive into this art form and have a look and see what develops from it jane i thought yours you were very brave but i really enjoyed yours i know you're a bit worried about uh, it and not not hitting the mark that's for but, jane yeah, mm -hmm. really... That's next for Jane. Oh, enough, <laughs> enough, enough, enough. <laughs> it, it really resonated and it brought back the feelings. I mean, we have talked about it at length before about how it felt to be just have the legs cut from under you when you thought that, you know, we all thought we were just getting, finding our feet and getting somewhere. Absolutely. So you really got that across as well. So well done. That's been oh, brilliant. Thank you. Darling. Thank you. <laughs> Back at you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, what can I say? Adessa, what a success. You know, people, yes. people are like actively going out to pursue this art form following your event. So honestly, thank you so much for your time and energy for putting together this event and for sharing and for performing and then for talking about all of these emotions and about, you know, we've, we've really been We didn't get to our, our our workshop. Maybe that's for later on. We can do a poetry workshop, writing workshop. Um, so in the works for maybe next time. That, yeah, I think I'm excited really about good. trying to do some writing today too. So I think maybe for next year, this will have to be part of that too. And maybe if we did the um, writing workshop before the poetry slam, then we could have the people who had experienced the writing workshop come along and perform their writing. That is brilliant. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, we're having lots of positives as well. We've got thumbs up and we also have a writing workshop. Yes, in capital letters. Good idea. So there we go. It's all in the works for next year. Um, thank you so much again, Adessa. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming along. Um, as usual, I will get this edited and up on the YouTube channel as soon as I possibly can. Um, if you have links to send me um, for any of the information that we spoke about, and if you do that, I'll add that into the text Ooh. on the YouTube video. Yes, I do have a social media page called Slam It, and it is um, where I post a lot of poetry. Um, it is an open um, format. So I'll send that to everybody too. Um, so, or um, I'll get it to Sarah so you guys can check it out. Um, and there are some of my favorite poets on there too. So, um, and since it's an open page, um, it's free and open for you guys to check out. Um, I do have some poet friends that um, post there once in a while too. So it's really cool. So I will make sure you all have access to that. Yeah, that sounds super fun. What a lovely thing to end on. Thank you so much. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>